Kunanen was brazen enough to use the car's cellular phone. The police intercepted two calls made just outside Philadelphia. That next morning, the Philadelphia police held a news conference at about 11 o'clock, announcing that Andrew Kunanen had used Lee Miglin's cell phone in the Lexus in the Philadelphia area. Obviously, Kunanen was listening to his radio, heard it, and said, I've got to get rid of this car. Not long after, Kunanen abandoned the Lexus at a cemetery in southern New Jersey. According to authorities, Kunanen shot and killed William Reese, the caretaker of the cemetery, then drove off in Reese's pickup truck. The death toll had now grown to four victims, and with the body count mounting, Andrew Kunanen's infamy reached a new level. The FBI placed him on its 10 most wanted list. And the television reported on the speculation that the stranger in the houseboat just might be Andrew Kunanen. Everybody involved in the search for Andrew Kunanen are at this scene and firmly believe this must be him or they would be elsewhere right now. Soon, authorities shut off electricity in the area. For four hours, police waited and watched. Finally, they fired tear gas into the boat. Here we go, guys. Here we go. Through the clouds of smoke, they searched. Upstairs, in the master bedroom, they found a man wearing only boxer shorts, lying face up on the bed. On his stomach, a 40 caliber gun. The man had what looked like a week's growth of beard. He had shot himself in the mouth. After several hours, authorities matched the fingerprints on the body to those from the pawn shop. It was Andrew Kunanen. All across the nation, our citizens can stand down and breathe a sigh of relief. The reign of terror brought upon us by Andrew Kunanen is over. And so it ended. A life that had begun amid the working class immigrants of National City that had sought glitter and money and good times in the bars and mansions of San Diego, that had cultivated fine clothes and fascinating friendships, that life ended in a Miami Beach houseboat, half naked, hungry, and alone. We uh, built uh, Kunanen up in the media somewhat as this sort of cool uh, character uh, who was, uh, you know, calmly uh, eluding uh, this massive dragnet. But you have to imagine that, uh, that Kunanen must have felt a lot of fear. The long climb ended with a terrifying and bloody fall. Police believe Andrew Kunanen left behind five victims, six grieving families, including his own, and many unanswered questions. In uh, learning about Andrew Kunanen, uh, the one thing that kept coming uh, to the surface is this flamboyant, uh, egotistical individual uh, who uh, continued to uh, spend a lot of money and, uh, in this case, uh, forgot to leave the ultimate tip. Uh, that being why he did what he did. The sensationalism hasn't died down yet, but once it does, he's just another common criminal. That's all he is. He's nothing special. He's just a common, he's just a common thug. I think his friends will remember him as the fun-loving guy that he was. Somebody who loved life and always had a good time and always had a smile and always had time for a friend. He wanted a legacy of, here are my accomplishments. Respect me, uh, love me, be affectionate towards me. Uh, and instead, we're all left puzzled. What motivated you, Andrew? Why did you do what you did? The man who made his life a series of stories and secrets may have taken the greatest secret with him, the secret of why. <laughs>